Empress of the Adeptus Sororitas isn't afraid to lead from the front line, and she does it in style. This model is absolutely fantastic, and in this video I want to show you the approach I took to building and painting her. When starting a new model, I like to test the paint scheme I'm going for to make sure it looks appropriate. There isn't a lot I wanted to do differently to the box art, but I wanted to test the red robes. Here I'm using Affinity Designer. You can use Photoshop or a similar tool if you'd like. They all have similar functionality. I like Affinity Designer because there's no monthly fees. I'm using the pen tool to draw regions that I want to tint. Once I'm happy with the region, I set the fill color to my desired scheme and scroll through the layer effects until I find the one that is appropriate. Keep overlaying regions for tinting until you have the desired result. Here's what I landed on. Now that I know what I want to do, I can start sub-assembly of the model. In this case, I'm using a lot more sub-assemblies than I normally would, simply because the parts are close together and I want to dry brush some of them, which won't work very well if you're working in tricky gaps. I'm using a Vallejo white primer and an airbrush to apply it. You don't need to prime models this way, but this is my preferred method. When working with gold, you can get pretty good results with a black base coat, but I'm planning to have a fairly bright gold to match my Celestine. Here I'm going to mix my paint with some Vallejo airbrush flow improver and start painting all the different sub-assembly parts. For those curious, I'm using a Sparmax Max 3 airbrush. For a cheaper range airbrush, its performance is quite reasonable, however it isn't always cooperative. Try not to layer the paint on too thick, it's always better to do a thin coat, wait for it to dry, and do another coat. For the head and any other small parts, I recommend sticking them to something like a piece of dowel. This will make it much easier to paint. Now that everything is base coated, I'm going to start with my metallics. In this case, I'm using Vallejo Liquid Gold, Liquid Copper, and also Liquid Silver. These are not the easiest paints to work with, being alcohol-based instead of acrylic, but in my opinion, the end result is worth the hassle. The main thing to note is that you cannot use water to thin the paint or clean the airbrush. In the red cap here, I have a small amount of isopropyl alcohol at 70% strength, and this will work fine. Also worth noting that this red lid is a terrible palette. The paint dries really quickly when it spreads, so a small cup would work much better. Don't use it out of the pot either, or the alcohol will evaporate too quickly. Make sure you do the shield and the hilt of the spear in bronze. I also use liquid silver for the spearhead and shoulder rockets. Once everything is painted, leave it to dry properly before continuing to the next step. It may remain sticky for several hours. Next I'm going to use some iron breaker and null oil to finish off the metallics on the head. The visor was done with Griffound Orange contrast paint. Next let's do the shoulder statues. I'm going to be using Skeleton Horde contrast paint as it's fantastic as a base for statues. Then using Screaming Skull by dry brushing to add a highlight. I'm being a bit generous with how much Screaming Skull is on my brush because I want it to be bright enough that it looks different to the gold as it will be right next to the gold sections. Both are quite close to brown so visually it can be confusing if they were too similar. Once done they can now be fitted to the main torso along with the head. Note that the colour behind the head is Volopus Pink Contrast Paint. I felt it looked a little bit more regal than the black used on the box art. I did however use Black Templar Contrast Paint on the inside. 
Now I'm going to use some null oil in the recesses of the silver section on the front here, just to bring out some more of that detail. With this taken care of, the front panel can now be glued on. I'm just going over that penitent seal with some skeleton hoard for the script and volipus pink for the seal itself. For the rockets I used a Flesh Terror's red contrast paint. You need to be very careful with these as it's very easy to go over the edges. If you do, just clean it up with some Stormhose Silver Citadel paint. Okay, before gluing more parts together it's good to clean up the remaining white areas with a metallic colour. In this case I'm using Lead Belcher. Now this is done I'm going to start gluing Morveen's arm on. Again painting the metallics with Lead Belcher. And for the controls themselves I'm using Black Templar Contrast Paint over the metallic colour. Simple yet effective. Now let's add some scripture to the penitent seal. You could use paint for this, but I prefer to use a small tipped micron marker. Be careful not to smudge this as it does take a while to dry. It may even run if you try to varnish it too soon. So it's best to wait a day. That's the torso looking good. Now I want to work on the walker's arms. For the spear I've used Volipus Pink on the handle and some lead belcher for the cable. If you want the handle to look more metallic, you can dry brush Stormhose Silver over the top. For the weapon I'm going to be using Lead Belcher again on the majority of the weapon and Retributor Armor on the parts that should be gold. And do the same for the ammunition chain. For the shield I started by dry brushing Stormhose Silver to bring out the detail. I think this looks great over the bronze. The front of the weapon followed the same process as the back and with a little Flesh Terror's red on the side. For the robes I wanted to lay down a base colour, and for this I chose Flesh Terror's red contrast paint again. Using contrast paint helps to bypass the need to do recess shading, however I still recommend highlights which we'll have a look at doing soon. Don't worry too much if it dries a little uneven, we'll be fixing that up in the highlighting stage. Now I'm going to use some plain acrylic white to clean up the shoulder pad symbology. Before we move on to basing, I'd like to take a moment to give an update on hobby life. If you don't know what hobby life is, when I returned to the hobby I wanted an accurate way to track my spending versus completion of models and keep me motivated. I couldn't find exactly what I was after, so I made it. In the latest update I've just released, we now have the ability to add photos to projects. This pairs greatly with the new activity log so you can see a monthly account of what you've purchased and what you've finished. So I can see here I purchased more than on the 12th and completed on the 15th. Hobby Life is free to download and this is just the start. I have a lot of features planned. Supporting me via the Patreon will help get those features in your hands faster. Thanks for hanging in there with me and let's get back to the build. The base debris that's provided in the kit looks really nice, but it feels too flat on the rather large base. I want to give it a little bit of elevation, and to do this I'm going to use a piece of corkboard. Right here I'm roughly marking out how big I want the piece of cork to be. It's good to start a bit bigger than what you think you need, because you can easily break parts off to get to the exact size that you want. Using a craft knife I'll score around the marked area, and break off the piece of cork. Make sure to save the pieces you're breaking off as they'll make really good rocks on your bases. I'm also taking this opportunity to super glue some magnets to the bottom of the base so the model can be stored in a magnetic case. If you want to see what my cases look like then check out my progress video on this channel. Now my cork base is prepared. I think this elevator part should look pretty good with the additional overhanging space. There's a lot of great detail on this base, so I'm going to start painting these parts before gluing it together. 
starting with Skeleton Horde, I'm going to paint the skulls, nice and simple. XV88 is my favourite colour for areas of earth or ground. So I'm going to lay down this next. Don't worry if it's brighter or darker in some areas, this will only add to the effect. For the metallics and the debris, I'm going to be using Screaming Bell. Partly because I like the name, but also look at this rich metal colour. Dawnstone is great for picking out rocks. I'm also using it for the concrete. Now to start doing some weathering, firstly with Nilac Oxide. Paint this over the screaming bell, focus mostly around the bolts, but also in areas most exposed to the conditions. You may have noticed I haven't painted the ammunition shells yet, this is because they are new, whereas everything else in the scene has been there for quite a while, and needs to be weathered. The Nilac Oxide looks really effective once it dries. Now I'm going to use Screaming Skull for highlighting, using a dry brush technique just to try and catch all the edges that are exposed to light. This will look pretty crappy now, but next we're going to do a generous layer of Agrax Earthshade, which will help tie it all together. Next, let's go back and finish those shells using Retributor Armor. This is the finished product. Now we can start positioning and gluing all the parts together. I'm using super glue for this. I'd normally pin the model to the cork, but since this base has a pretty wide contact area, this shouldn't be an issue. Next I'm going to repeat the process I used on the base, starting with a coat of XP88. Once it dries, it's time to give the base some texture. I'm using a mix of fine to medium grain material. You can just use sand or some dirt from the backyard if you would like to save some money here. I'm not using any particular material, it's a mix of a few different packs. Now I'm going to use some PVA glue, any PVA glue will do, and start coating the area you want to stick the rock material to. So keep putting down glue on the base and dipping it in the material until all areas are covered. You may also notice I added some extra skulls to the base. If you don't have skulls, take a look through your bits box and see if there's anything else that will fit the terrain. Now I'm going to make a mix of PVA and water until it is the consistency of milk. With a brush, dab this on the base covering the same area as the rock material. It should look a bit like a bowl of cereal when you are done. Set it aside to dry overnight, and it should be nice and solid, preventing rocks from falling off. Time for a final layer of XV88 over all the rock, and dry brush some Screaming Skull. Similar to what I did on the plastic base. I'm using plain white to go over each of the skulls. Then as we did earlier, a layer of Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint making sure to get all the recesses for perfect shading. Now you guessed it, a generous layer of Agrax Earthshade to tie it all together. Try not to coat the skulls too much as they will become too dark. This will take a while to dry, but I'm going to jump straight into adding some grass tufts. I normally glue different types of flock to the base, but these tufts will look really effective on this scene. I'm using mostly Vallejo tufts. These shrubs look really cool and detailed. By using different types of tufts, the end result will look a lot more interesting, 
Blayo also has a lot of alien colored tufts such as blue and purple, so you can get some really cool effects. Now I'm just using Abaddon Black for the base rim, but any somewhat glossy black will do for this. Okay great, the base is prepared. Now we can glue the rest of the model together and put it on the base to do the finishing touches. It's always good to finish the sub-assemblies as soon as possible so that the highlights you're doing are in the right angles to hit the light. And this will make the overall model look um, contextually correct. The model already looks really good, but it's a little bit flat. I'm going to start by doing some recess shading. Everywhere that is gold will be done in gullum and flesh, while all silvery metals will be done with null oil. Gullum and flesh may sound like a weird choice to go over gold, but trust me, there is a method to the madness. Next I want to work on the robes. Because it is cloth I want the transitions to be rather smooth. And to do this I'm going to use three colours and I'll be mixing them on a wet palette. I'm also using a little bit of glaze medium to help keep the paints wet so that they can be further blended on the model. This isn't required but I find it makes the process a little bit easier. Try not to use too much or the paint will be too hard to work with. I started by making a gradient on my wet palette. Now I'm going to work from dark to light, depending on the where the light is hitting the model. The lightest color works great as an edge highlight on any of the raised areas of the cloth. If you go too bright, simply pick one of your mid-tones and come back and blend it on the model. This is what it looks like dry. If the paint has moved a bit and doesn't look 100% right, then you can always go back to your wet palette and make some adjustments. Almost there. Now the work needs to be sealed so that it doesn't rub off over time. I normally use an airbrush for this part. I'm going to start by giving the model a coat of satin varnish, then touch up the shiniest areas with some gloss varnish. Depending on how you feel about the cloth having some sheen, you may also want to use matte varnish on the cloth. You don't have to use an airbrush for this step, a regular brush will do a great job. Just make sure you water down the varnish and don't have too much on your brush. It can take a bit of the sharpness of the model and also look a bit cloudy if the varnish is too thick. If you want to use a citadel varnish then storm shield is equivalent to satin and art code is equi equivalent to gloss. That's it. This process took me about 8 hours in total, not counting the times that I had to wait for things to dry. I'm really happy I chose to elevate the model a bit. The model still looks quite small in comparison to other walkers and warsuit type models, so this should help bring it up closer to the level. Again, sorry about the production quality, I'm doing my best to improve that as I go, but didn't want to wait to start work on this amazing model. I appreciate you making it this far and hope you found value in this tutorial. Thanks for watching.